We're going to talk about convergence of random variables and in particular about convergence in probability. Before we get into that though, we're going to remind ourselves what convergence of deterministic or non-random variables looks like, right? And this is related to calculus or analysis. And then we're going to relate that to convergence of random or stochastic sequences, so sequences of random variables rather than sequences of numbers, and think about what it means for these to converge to a constant, to a non-random number. And in particular, we're going to talk about this convergence in probability. There are many notions of convergence of random sequences and random variables when we're dealing with probability theory or statistics. We're going to go through convergence of deterministic sequences intuitively, probably in more depth than we really should here, but it's going to really help us when we're thinking about what the probabilistic analogs are. So let's think, what does it mean for a deterministic or non-random sequence to converge, you know, intuitively? So let's think about a very simple sequence, the sequence one, one half, one third, et cetera. So the nth element is one over n, and we'll recall the sequence converges to zero, and we're just gonna look at a picture of this. And again, this is gonna feel very simple, but it will become helpful when we think about the probabilistic analog. So here, the first element is one, and I've drawn a vertical bar at one. Then one half, I've drawn a vertical bar at one half. One third, one quarter, one fifth, one sixth, etc. We can keep going. And here, I visualize the first 30 elements starting at one, going all the way down to one thirtieth. Again, we could keep going, and those bars would get closer and closer to zero. So what does it mean when we say this deterministic sequence converges to zero? Well, it means that for any tolerance we might choose epsilon, a number greater than zero, we can look at our sequence, and if we discard some number of initial elements, and that number will depend on what epsilon we're looking at, we can guarantee that the rest of the sequence will be within that tolerance epsilon of our limit zero. So let's just visually try this out and remind ourselves of how this works. So let's imagine our tolerance epsilon is, is 0.3. In this case, we ask our question, is the first element of our series within 0.3 of our limit zero? And we look at it and we see again on this plot, we have zero, our limit plus 0.3 is this vertical red bar, zero minus 0.3 is this other vertical red bar. And so the question is, is the first element of our sequence between these two red bars? The answer is no. Okay, so we can now continue. Um, how about the second element of our sequence? And again, we see the answer is no. The second element is 0.5. It does not fall in here. The third element is one third. It doesn't quite fall in there. The fourth element does fall between those two red bars. It is within a tolerance of 0.3 um, of zero. Um, and every subsequent element will also fall in there. So we say yes, for epsilon equals 0.3, if we had discarded the first three elements of our sequence, all subsequent elements will fall within that tolerance of zero. Right, exactly like I said. We could imagine trying another tolerance, 0 0.2. And here, rather than just discarding the first three elements, we need to discard the first four elements and the rest of the elements of that sequence after these first four will fall within that tolerance of zero. And again, I've only tried two different epsilons. You could imagine trying lots and lots of different epsilons. You don't generally do that. You generally have a mathematical proof to show convergence. But again, as epsilon gets smaller, we would just have to discard more and more elements to ensure that we are within that epsilon tolerance of zero. And mathematically, if we wanted to do that, we would note that for some arbitrary epsilon greater than zero, we would want to discard essentially the first one over epsilon elements of our sequence. So if epsilon was 0.001, we'd want to discard the first thousand and all of the remaining elements of the sequence would be within epsilon of zero. Right? And again, we could make this more mathematically formal if we want to, but this is not a class on analysis. This is a class on statistics. So, okay, we've, we've reminded ourselves what it means for deterministic sequences to converge. So what about sequences of random numbers? What would it mean for a sequence of random numbers to converge to a non-random limit? Um, and there are several definitions that we could use when we're talking about convergence to a non-random limit. We're going to focus on convergence and probability. It's going to be the most useful for things that we are going to end up doing later. All right. So convergence and probability. Before formally stating what this means, 
let's try to understand what this idea might look like. So suppose we have a sequence of Gaussian random variables and that each has mean zero, but a standard deviation that decreases in n. And say it, it decreases like one over n. Let's actually visualize what these densities look like. Here we have a density for x1, a normal with mean zero standard deviation one. On the x-axis, I label it sequence quote value because it's not like the deterministic sequence where each element took on a single number. Now each element takes on a distribution. So our first random variable, it's fairly spread out. X2 still has mean zero. Now the standard deviation is one half. It's a little more peaked at zero. X3 is a little more peaked at zero, etc. right? As we continue along, we get random variables. We jump from X5 to X10 that are more and more peaked at zero. So looking at this, we might naturally say it feels like this sequence of random variables converges to zero. Right? It converges such that essentially all of the mass is at zero. So, so again, all of the mass is concentrating at zero more and more as we get further and further in the sequence. So intuitively, we might say it's converging to zero. We do have to be careful with our definition, though. All of those variables we saw were Gaussian variables, and any Gaussian variable, no matter what its mean or standard deviation, has some probability of being arbitrarily large. Another way of saying this is the density has support on the entire real line. So even if we have a normal with mean zero and variance one over 10,000 or one over 100,000, those still have positive probability of say being greater than 10,000 or 100,000 or a million. That probability gets infinitesimally small, but it never actually is equal to zero. And so we, we just, we have to be careful in how we define things because again, these pictures make it clear that the mass concentrates around zero, even though there is some positive probability of finding the random variable way out here or way back here. So the way we do this is with this notion convergence in probability. And I'm, I'm writing this out in a way to parallel deterministic convergence. So here we say that the sequence converges to zero in probability if for any tolerance we could think of, epsilon greater than zero, as we go further and further in our sequence, the probability that those terms will be further than epsilon from zero becomes negligible. And I have a formal definition here. Formally, the sequence converges in probability to a point here it's x naught, not necessarily zero. If for any threshold or tolerance epsilon, that is greater than zero, you have that the probability that this difference, the distance between xn and x naught exceeds epsilon um, converges to zero. So let's look at this in pictures to try to understand what this is saying. And again, it's related to that analytic version of convergence that we had started with, but it's a little different. So let's imagine we want to, to show that the sequence converges to zero in probability. We choose epsilon equals 0.3, right? And we want to understand what we're trying to show for epsilon equals 0.3. We draw this region of with 0.3 around zero. If the sequence truly converges to zero, we need the mass, all of the mass, eventually to concentrate within that region defined by the two red bars. So here we look at x1, most of the mass is outside of that tolerance. x2, the mass is slowly starting to move in, right? And once we're up to say x10, then almost all of the mass is inside. As we go further and further in the sequence, the amount of mass outside of this tolerance will converge to zero. And in order to prove that this sequence converges in probability to zero, we would need to be able to show that for any tolerance, we might consider the probability of falling outside of that tolerance eventually gets negligibly small. Here, if we look at x1000 and its distribution, um, notice that I modified the x-axis now, it is incredibly tightly peaked around zero and the subsequent elements of the sequence will only be more and more tightly peaked. Again, this random variable has non-zero probability of being as large as a thousand or a million, etc. but the majority of that probability is incredibly close to zero. Now, I wanted to give another example that if we don't look too closely and don't visualize it, 
seems like we have random variables that are converging, and in a sense we do, but they are not converging in probability to a constant. So we're going to consider a slight change from that previous sequence of Gaussian random variables. Now we also have a sequence of Gaussian random variables. Um, here the standard deviation of every element is 1, but the mean is decreasing from 1 to 1 half, etc., where the mean of the nth random variable is 1 over n. So let's look at what these densities look like. Let's start with x1. It's a Gaussian with standard deviation of variance 1, and its mean is at 1. And I've sort of put a dotted line at 0 because something about this sequence is converging to 0. But, you know, there might be this question, well, is it converging in probability to 0? Let's look at x2. Okay, the center of our distribution is now 1 half. The mean is 1 half. Oh, that's moving towards 0. x3, it's moving towards 0. And what do we see as we continue going? We see that the center of these distributions is moving towards 0. But these random variables are not converging in probability to 0 because the mass is not concentrating around 0. You know, for the seventh element, for the hundredth element, for the thousandth element, we will still have reasonable probability that this random variable is, say, outside of negative 1 to 1. The distributions are not getting more peaked. It's just that the center is changing. So x10, again, much closer to being centered at zero, but we're not getting our distribution concentrating in any sense. So again, the distribution doesn't concentrate at zero or elsewhere, so we wouldn't say it converges in probability to a constant. If we look at it, though, those densities are getting closer and closer to a normal with mean zero and variance one. In a sense, you might say, well, the random variables aren't converging to a constant, but their distributions are converging to a fixed distribution. That's an example of convergence and distribution, and we will discuss that much more in what follows.